as we talked in our last video, the market is still showing you this signal, which is a rising wedge, which do suggest you are going to slow down. And the market does show you that right now. Now, that's not a heavy red, which you're observing in the market. You do see some of them moving up and some of them doing a little bit more in red. But this is what the alt market is doing right now. The altcoin market broke to the downside. We need to actually see if the price can move back up into this range because it can actually drop further and then come back in as a positive news. But most likely it can come further lower, right? This can turn into a support range. But if you look at XRP for that matter, this is on a daily and you are looking for where the money is, right? Where we can go in next two, three months. That's what we are looking at, right? So in that sense, first you are looking for like, okay, are we going to go down with the market? Most likely, yes. If so, how low do we expect this to continue to the downside? And if we bounce, where are we going? This is what we are going to look at in today's video and then break it down to different assets as well. Welcome to the Sinefic Investor family, where the normal retail guys learn how to become the next top 10 percentage of the world. Now, yes, there is different news narrative coming from different central banks. Some of them are slowing down, which is now a little bit of trend. And the news which is coming out is like, okay, they are playing with fire, which means the inflation tolerance is what they're actually talking about. Even though the inflation has not dropped much, they are not going heavy on the hiking cycle. Now, there is a reason for that. If they do, in a lot of different countries like Australia, where the property market has gone sky high with free money, that's going to burst, right? So these kind of narrative is going to play in different countries like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, you know, all these places where the property market just went sky high. Now they have to look for one way or the other so that this is not bursting, right? If it does, that's going to be bad, so bad. Now, coming back to the price action side of this, if we are looking at XRP, we can actually see, okay, there is a lot of buying and selling involved here, close to 0.37. And if we actually look at this, we'll see some of these extending all the way down towards 0.32, but we don't have much. Most of it can be absorbed here, 0.35 range. And then the similar range which you have is upside, close to 0.5. So you first doing a little bit of downside, like this, and then going back up, say a bounce from there can be good. Now, when we drop, are we only looking for this range of 0.35? That's going to be one of the biggest question because the altcoin market actually suggests to you that it is making in a pattern like this. And if it drops, your first level of support comes in here, after which the next level of support comes in here. So now the first question is, okay, yes, we broke that to the downside. How low can we go? This is going to be like 10 percentage. And if you measure the move here, that suggests you six percentage. Great. So this is the point where you broke. Now you take that six percentage and it comes somewhere here. Great. So you actually go into XRP and look at the current price. That's not a big drop. You can actually see that because even if we drop that six to 10 percentage, we still only come back to this short term trend line, which is inside a macro pattern. So that still is OK if we are coming down to this range and bouncing. But the volume or at least the action in the market does suggest you there is a lot of volume involved here. So when it drops, it can come to 0 0.35, 0 0.33, that range. Now, in percentage terms, you can actually do this. You're going to come close to 0 0.33, 0 0.34, and then bounce because you do have a lot of buying and selling. The orders being set up here. So when we bounce, yes, on the short term narrative, we are expecting this to happen. So it's not going to be that bad. Even if we drop, that's going to be an opportunity for those who are looking to buy. Now, 
On the other side of this, if you're actually taking this one out and trying to, you know, go zoom out a little bit more to see where this trend line support is and where we have some other volume, where the volume goes fading out immediately, right? Like from there, people are not even thinking about buying it more on this time horizon. So if that's the case, people are still thinking 0 0.32, 0 0.33 like these wicks. So it can just be an order being put in the market. So if the price drops like this, they absorb that lower price. But you do see that there is significantly nothing below that 0.3 mark. So 0.3 is like this previous level of support. So those who are putting it there is looking for this support. Those who are putting it here is looking for this support imagining that this trend line may hold, but still a long wick can come in. And that is the probability in the market. So when you actually zoom in, trying to look at, okay, if that's the case on a daily chart, what am I looking at on even short term narrative? And that's where, you know, the high frequency trading bots and other traders get involved. And right now when the market volume is too low, now that's a key point to highlight. You go here, you refresh the page, look at the volume right now. In XRP, this is like the lowest volume in a while which we have seen. Great, 400 million. It used to be 800 to a billion and it used to fluctuate, fine. But right now, given that the volume is low, bots can manipulate the market much easier. This is going to be something which is of interest. And then look at this area is of interest, but at the same time, you do see these ranges as well, where the price buyers, sellers are interested. So you do see some of the sellers here. So do they actually imagine that the price is going to go up here. Great. And they're going to take some profits. And even at that point, there are people, now look at the buyers actually, it's actually slowly increasing, increasing, increasing. So they do believe from this point, it's good to buy. Why is that? Say, keeping the same time horizon, keeping the same structure there to see why bias and activity is increasing there. You just take a horizontal line trying to see what's happening from this level. You have the support which you actually broke to the downside. So you are trying to just extend it. So this range is considered as a support by the market for some time. Then we took that one, went to the downside. So when we get back above this range, now a lot of people think, okay, we are back up and this trend is to continue, right? And that is the only reason why you see a lot of price action being expected in this range. People are going there, putting that orders, right? So when the price is getting here, watch this. It is slowly tapering to the downside. You don't get too much buy, you don't get too much sell. So what is that price range? It's 0.5 towards 0.55. So these resistance are being considered in this time horizon. Remember, this is a four hour chart. So the price fluctuation here, what we think is going to happen is like it can go down a little bit further and then bounce. Now that will change if the volume profile also changes. Then you're trying to actually zoom out, right? You are trying to zoom out as much as possible in a way that you're looking for what people expect where majority of the volume is centered at. Right now it's here. And you can actually literally see a lot of volume is centered to that range of 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Why do you think that is? Say on the long term trend line, this is your resistance. So as soon as you break, you still find people buying in and or at least people interested in buying this asset as it moves to the upside. So this is something to keep in mind as you look at the price because then you're looking at the pattern, you're looking at all these trend lines and you understand like, okay, if we break, that's a bullish narrative. But right now, you need to bounce off from this level. Each time you come down to test this, buyers are interested in purchasing this asset. But right now, if you look at this on a four hour chart, you do get lower highs being formed. Now, yes, you're not making lower low here. Your trend is still continuing. You put one here, which is not bad. And then you made another low here. Then you're making another low here. Now the market is trying to make another low. So if you look at this, it's trending higher. The support is actually going up. So if the bulls are able to push the price through this one, 
now things change. Now, as we just talked, we are looking for this range of 0 0.48, 0 0.5, and we do see market expecting that, right? So that's going to be a positive narrative for XRP. Now we actually go, you want to actually look at the total market cap, which is for uh, all coins, excluding Bitcoin, right? And you want to actually put in this range and see like, okay, what do you actually expect? So on a four hour time horizon, you do see there is a lot happening here, right? Close to the average volume, you can actually see how people are looking at it. Now, given the fact that we are observing something like this in the market, we can argue, okay, there is a possibility we are going to come back down. But look at this bottom range. You are tapering here in the volume or people thinking that it is going to come down. So by that time, you are reaching only 4% to the downside, which is not a big volatility if you consider the entire crypto market because we do 10, 20, 30% on a regular basis, right? Then we are trying to slowly, slowly move out and see where majority of the volume in the market is or where they think it's going to move. Now, the explanation from my point is that this is going to be considered as a trend line support, which it is. And then you are looking for your origins like this. So where can you actually go? Most likely, this correcting a little bit lower and then bouncing from here is going to be a positive narrative. And there is a lot Believe me, there is a lot of money on the sidelines expecting this to break. And if this breaks, now all of this money, which is waiting here, is going to participate. Now that is going to be something great because as you zoom out, as you go to a daily chart, you get the narrative clearly, you get the narrative crystal. What is it? The price is trying to actually put in a double bottom pattern and if it is breaking through the trend line this two trend line one is the falling trend line and the other one is the horizontal trend line you get the confirmation that a lot is going to happen now as you actually stay here in the market and zoom in to see like okay this is what's happening in the market and you do get some of the glitches here with the softwares but yeah you're looking at what is people involved in this market thinking or investors, institutional guys thinking, right? When you're zoomed in, what we are looking at is like in this time horizon, within this time, within this time, what people are looking for is a little bit of upside. Why is that? Then you're going down and you're, now don't get confused with this. These are the market participants involved here and what they expect, right? But when you actually compare with the amount of money, the order spending here, you can literally see how high it actually goes. So it can actually move all the way up to 1.3 trillion for altcoin market, where right now it's like, you know, way lower than that. So you are half a billion, half a uh, trillion in the volume and the market cap, you can actually push this higher. Now, if this is getting confirmed, what, will happen the Bitcoin price. That's altcoin market. So this thought process here will be like, okay, the Bitcoin dominance. What do you see in the Bitcoin dominance? Can the Bitcoin dominance climb from here? Because we are right now below a uh, resistance level and the RSI is actually tapering, which is not that great news in terms of the strength for the Bitcoin dominance to, in order to get a bit more clear picture, we usually just go and look at the trend line. This is the range which we have been getting supported from some time. Now you can go on to a 3D chart to get the narrative. Here, one thing is clear, even though we consider this as a horizontal trend line, we also do see something like this. We also do see something like this, right? So anyone who focus on TA will say, okay, this was a drop to the downside, Right now, we are slowing down inside this consolidative pattern, which usually suggests you have another leg to the downside. Now, that's actually true in the market. And we have seen that. Say, for example, here, you go to the upside, you do this corrective pattern, then you go further up. Great. So when you actually break that pattern to the opposite direction, that's where the trend changes. So if the trend needs to change, it needs to be close to this area and break to the upside. But that is not what's happening right now in the market. The market is actually close to the support. So if it bounces, yes, Bitcoin is going to gain more in terms of volume and money. Otherwise, it's going to drop further. 
what is it going to be, right? It's going to be a hard and challenging question, but when you zoom in to the market to see like where you are, you actually see a couple of supports and that support holding as of now. But even at that time, what you need to look at is what is the trend showing you. Say this is one high which you put in, followed by that this is the next high which is a lower high and you are literally creating lower, low, lower high structure, which is not yet that bullish. So if you need to confirm that there is going to be some bullish momentum coming in, in terms of the Bitcoin moving against the altcoin market, you do have to see this breaking back to the upside. And if it does, now you have another scenario where it shows you there is a possible double bottom for Bitcoin like this one. If you look at this here, we got that narrative and the price happened to go back up, right? The Bitcoin dominance bounced back up. Now, what does all this actually mean? So if you are in the market here and looking at a lot of different assets saying, okay, the market is not moving. Yes, we agree the market is not moving. But the positive news here is even after getting this bearish pattern, it's not actually breaking all the way down, getting huge momentum and dropping like a stone. It's slowly holding and people are intending to buy this at this range, which is actually a great news. And they don't actually expect it to go much further down. A lot of people involved are here, right? And as you go up, there are people still there expecting the price to slowly grind up. So if you are in the market and looking at various different assets to understand what's happening there, then you can look at the Patreon. The link is given in the description below. And if you have three to five minutes more, you can visit my new channel and take time. Watch this. It's about life, success and wealth building. And if you have any comments, please do drop that day. I'll completely check that and do as much as possible. So that's it for today, guys. I'll meet you on the next video. Bye bye.